Good morning, everyone. D.L. Cummings here with another episode of Friendly Fire. This show is where I bring on libertarians who are running for a public office or who are happen to be running for a state affiliate office. Today, I will bring on Tim Crosby. He is running for vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Florida. So let's bring him on. All right, Tim, how are you? Not bad. I didn't wasn't expecting an intro. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm doing my best, uh, you know, trying to make this show, you know, ultra professional so that when people see it, they're like, wow, you know, this is really great stuff. And, uh, you know, and then just see if we can't raise the bar for everybody. So let's get right into it. You are running for vice chair of the Libertarian Party of Florida. Tell us why you want, want to run. What what what? motivated you to run for vice chair instead of say any other position well i was really hoping that uh somebody else would step up somebody else that i thought would do a good job at it somebody like yourself or uh (laughs) (laughs) but but you all refused me uh and that's cool um and then as it kept going um you know i was having conversations with more and more people and they were just like well why don't you do it or like why don't why can't why can't you do it and I, it's hard to come up with a reason why i can't do it <laughs> uh i just want somebody else to do it i don't want to be the one but uh i eventually convinced myself to do it because i'm i feel like i'm already involved with the state party i just don't have a an actual role um i pay attention to a lot of the stuff that goes on i talk to a lot of people that are that are in the committees and and in regional rep positions and officer positions Uh, i give my two cents on everything i just don't have a vote Uh, and so this gives me a way to be more active originally uh i was thinking about something like secretary Mm -hmm. Uh, you know we're meeting right now this is the beginning of your day and most people's day this is the end of my day i'm gonna go to sleep right after this <laughs> so my availability during normal hours just isn't uh isn't that great uh, but the weekends are pretty open so once that became an option for me where i knew i could make the sunday meetings then it kind of made mm. more sense that i can be more actively involved in the party not just as like a note taker or something like that <laughs> or somebody right. else's roll call i could have a more active role and then uh, on top of that, there's just a lot of things that I want to see get done with the party. Um, there's been a lot of things that have frustrated me the last couple years as far as like just basic stuff not getting done that I feel like should be really simple. And I just don't understand why it's not getting done. I have some theories, but I don't want to put those out too publicly right now. We'll try to handle them internally first. But okay. basically like like. Basic so what kind of things like, would yeah, you be getting yeah. done that aren't getting done? Well, first of all, uh, the, the website is a huge problem right now. Um, mm-hmm. New members join and they go to LPF.org and they try to get involved with the, with the state party or with a local affiliate. There's Most often there's bad information on the website or outdated information. Uh, and so when you try to contact like a local affiliate or something like that, you might not have the most up-to-date information. If you want to get involved with a with a state uh, committee or something like that, uh, oftentimes you have the wrong person listed there or emails aren't getting read or responded to. Uh, if you want to get involved on the EC meeting, um, you know, I challenge new members to go try to find out how to do that because it's not, it's not easily accessible. It's not readily available. Um, and then a lot of times I, I've been involved a lot with uh, trying to get people to start new affiliates. And the first question they always ask me is, why should we do that? I want to answer that question with something tangible other than to say, well, you're affiliated with the with the state party. Like there has to be something else that comes along with that, too. Some reason to do it, some incentive, some motivation. So I think I, I want to address all those problems. The vice chair is a unique role. Um, mm-hmm. You're you're more of a supplementary role helping out the chair and, and uh, you know, doing what helping them do what they want to do. But as ex officio on all the different committees, it kind of gives you insight into everything that's going on. So you have a, you have your big, broad picture of what you want to do. And then you have the different committees that are tasked with different things. And I, I'm a manager at my job. Uh, mm-hmm. and so I feel like I'm pretty good at delegating. And I'm also really good at uh, just going to a meeting and saying, OK, you said last meeting you were going to have this. Like, where is it? What can we do to get it? it? Why don't you have it? Or you do have it. Great. What's the next step? Like, and just pushing those things along. So I feel like I could be good in this type of role and I, I feel like I could be effective. 
Gotcha. So since you mentioned the committees, one of the things that sure. people might not be aware of is, and you mentioned it, is that the vice chair is the ex officio and so involved in the committees. And so if you were to go to the committee's page, <clears throat> excuse me, folks, if you were to go to the committee's page, what you'll find is under the list of committee members, you're going to find the uh, the vice chair, the ex officio listed on all of those. So my question to you is there's, there's many committees. Are there any particular committees that you would want to really focus on and in what's happening with those committees? Affiliate support, candidates, communications. Uh, those would be the big ones. Convention is another one. Um, yeah, those would be the top four. I mean, that's half of them. So, <laughs> right. I feel like, yeah, I feel like I go to any of them and have something to say. Um, you know, audit is pretty, they're pretty straightforward. They they review spending and contracts and make sure that everything's above board. So I don't really know that I need to be all that involved in there. I can give my mm -hmm. own opinion on it. Um, you know, the rules committee is kind of an independent branch. Uh, platform committee is probably one that we don't really need if you ask me uh basically the job of the platform committee is to review the platform and make suggestions but mm -hmm. they make those suggestions at the convention and any delegate can change the platform anytime they want so i don't know that we necessarily need that one so it might not be one that i'm super focused on membership is huge uh we have a we have a, a problem with membership right now not the, i'm not saying the committee specifically but just in general the party has a membership issue um you know, there's going to be a lot of these seats, you know, there's going to be a couple of us running for vice chair, but there's a lot of these other seats, these regional seats that go un uncontested or unelected uh, year mm -hmm. after year. And that's just a problem with membership. So that's another one. There's five. <laughs> Uh, which committees am I forgetting? <laughs> um, well, I, I've got the list up. Um, I don't sure. want to pull, I, I could pull it up on the screen, but it's, you know, a huge long okay. page. Um, and, you know, I'm trying to remember which ones that you mentioned uh, specifically already. But let's see, there's, we'll just go down and read them real quick. Oh, we've got the affiliate um, audit, candidate, yeah. communication, convention, fundraising. I don't think you mentioned fundraising, actually. Fundraising. There we go. Um, uh, legislative action committee, uh, oh, that, that one. one. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I so like, they, that's, <clears throat> that's, sorry, that's another thing Good. too, with the, with the committees, um, a lot of times too, people get elected to these committee chair positions and they kind of go, mm -hmm. it's like a make your own adventure kind of deal. They're not given any sort of direction. And then as a result, there's no cohesion between the committees. That's something else that I want to see happen more. So for example, you made me think of it when you mentioned legislative action committee. Well, when there's a bill coming up or something that needs to be opposed, I think we can attack that from, from a couple different committees and find a way to make it work. So if we have any candidates, we can help them out with any sort of messaging that's related to it. Like, hey, like this is a bill that's coming up. This is why it's important. This is what the libertarian response to it might be. Like, here's mm -hmm. what you think. Like, take that on the campaign trail with you. Legislative action can start some petition drives, which would be great for uh, local affiliates to bring out to their events and they can help uh, recruit members off of that like hey did you are you aware that this thing is happening like here's this petition that we're gonna fight this thing and, and that could be pushed and then communications obviously putting that putting out the word and just saying like this is something that's happening everybody should pay attention you're low and then when if you, we can have these targeted messages too that go out to like if it's like a, a county ordinance that's going to be really bad we can say hey this thing is happening in your county and this is why it's important by the way if you're if you want to do something about it here's this local affiliate that you can go to uh, where there's mm -hmm. like-minded people who want to who want to push back against this thing there's no when something like that happens like when a candidate announces or a big bill happens or something there doesn't seem to be much direction from the state party as to what to do about it and i think that's something that that if people want to ask like why why be affiliated with the state party well if we were doing things like that that wouldn't be a question would be like well because they, they come up with a lot of great ideas they got all this stuff going on right okay yeah. uh fair point so you're out of polk county and it appears that you are also the vice chair of polk county as well the affiliate there is that correct no this is not correct <laughs> oh okay I was, this i was a yeah i was the vice chair there i'm the secretary there now um yeah yeah the, you know, and it, it, that, that's not on them. We have to file our reaffiliation paperwork because we're lazy, but yes. <laughs> okay, so l help me square that away. So you are the secretary of the um, of Polk County, and the website currently says for Polk County does say 
vice chairman is Tim Crosby, but you just criticized information on the LPF's website for being inaccurate. So how do you square that away with your own affiliate not having sure. that information correct? And then you, you know, you're saying, Hey, I, you know, one of the things I would like to do is square away the LPF's website. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Um, we announced, uh, our election results when they happened. Uh, we still need, I think we need one more signature on our reaffiliation paperwork. So maybe they're just waiting for that, but there's other ones that, that I'm more specifically talking about. I mean, all the people that are listed there, you'll get in contact with one of us. Um, but like Monroe County, uh, they're probably not affiliated anymore. They're still listed on there. Um, the, the other, the big thing is the, uh, executive committee meetings, those, those not being there. So how do I square it? I mean, our, our, the link to our website's there and our information's there. You can get a hold of us that way. So I guess ours is okay, <laughs> but there's a lot of them that are not okay. And right. I, and that's the feedback that I hear is for those members that are trying to get involved, they don't know where to go. And especially for the unaffiliated ones too, they don't know what to do. It's not clear what you do if you're in say Hernando County that doesn't have an affiliate. What do you do when you go to the website? Okay. All right. Fair enough. Um, so, so you are, you are an officer, at least, even if the Polk County website information is inaccurate, sure. but let me ask you then, um, how does the work that you've done in Polk County translate to preparing yourself for the vice chair role in, uh, at the state level? So one of the duties of the vice chair is to be there when the chair can't be there to run meetings mm -hmm. and do stuff like that. So I feel like I can do that pretty well. Uh, I've ran a lot of meetings at Polk County and sometimes they get a little frustrated because I make them stick to Robert's rules, <laughs> mm -hmm. even though they might not want to. But um, so I feel like I'm, I'm comfortable enough in it. I won't say that I'm well versed or that I know every every lawyer trick or whatever rule trick there is. Sure. But I, but I feel like I can run a meeting coherently. So that that part I've got down. Um, being uh, a neutral uh, arbiter of what's going on, <laughs> I guess, is, is that the right word, arbiter? I don't know. Being somebody who can just sit there and just go through the motions without getting emotional about it or, or getting upset, I think I can handle that part fairly well. Um, and then as as vice chair and as uh, you know, uh, other EC members, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. other EC positions that I've had in Polk County, um, my focus has always been on just enabling people. That's what I want to do. I don't want to come in here and just like run everything and tell everybody that I know the only way. So even mm -hmm. though it might sound like that sometimes. I have a lot of ideas, but ultimately what I want to do is, is enable people to be able to be as effective as they can be and pursue the goals that they want to achieve. And so any way that I can do that, if there's, um, you know, if there's some sort of like, at, at, I'll give you an example well, in Polk County, a, bef way before my time, somebody had set it up to where uh, executive committee members could not be chair committee chairs. And then so we were constantly had these, we didn't have committees, we just had just like people or whatever. And that's really what a committee is, just a group of people doing things. But it was just this arbitrary thing that was preventing people from from doing stuff. And so we just got rid of that. Like, I want to find like roadblocks like that, that create these uh, obstacles, these these imaginary obstacles, and get them out of the way so people feel comfortable pursuing whatever it is that they want to do, or if they need some sort of funding for something to help them push that or know how to go about getting it, stuff like that. Okay. Did that answer your question? I don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, no, I think so. You, you, the, quest, the question is basically, you know, what kind of things have you done at the sure. – um, the executive committee level for an affiliate that prepare you for an executive committee role in the state party, right? Uh, because there's some similarity, right? It's just a larger yeah. scale, yeah. effectively. I mean, as the, you know, if you're the, if you're running for a chair or the secretary, we, we, uh, you know, like the roles are basically going to be the same. You just will have more to do potentially sure. at the state level than say at the affiliate level, possibly. I mean, there's, you know, uh, I'm the chair of Duval, and we just came out of an election. I assure you, there was plenty for three me to do. Right, right, right. We had three candidates <laughs> running, and so there was plenty for me to do, and uh, I was not short on work at all. Whereas other counties, where maybe they don't, they're not having an, an election and don't have anybody running, their chair is probably doing a little bit less. You know, <clears throat> yeah, no, just as a natural fair. reality. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Polk County is definitely one of those smaller affiliates. I mean, we have a we have an event that we go to every month. We have a, a meeting every month, and uh, 
we try to build as much as we can, but we're all pretty busy. So we're definitely, we fit that category of we do less. Um, but I think that just gives me more time to be active at the state level. Right. And, and by, by no means is that a slam on any county that's, you know, that is doing less. Sure. Um, once upon a time, Duval wasn't doing very much and some other counties were probably doing more than we were. Um, you know, so I think there's an ebb and flow that just simply happens. Um, okay. So moving along then, I noticed that, you know, when I went and looked it up, uh, I didn't see that you were on any committees presently. Yes. Um, have you been on any committees in the past? Affiliate support. Uh, I started off as a member, the chair had stepped down for one reason or another, and then I had to chair it for the second half. Uh, but yeah, I was on affiliate support. Okay. And is, you know, being ex officio, you'd be uh, effectively on all of them, even if you don't necessarily participate in some of them as much. Um, is is the, it, you know, it sounds like a, a lack of experience, and I, and, I, and I don't mean that in a negative sense, just like, you haven't had a lot of experience on all the different, um, all the different uh, uh, committees, and then you're taking a leap and saying, "All right, vice chair." So, what is it that you think um, will help you be a productive member without having that experience? Because I don't, I don't want to, I don't, I, I think experience can be important, but it doesn't. It's not the end all, be all. Like. Plenty of people can get on and, you know, hit the ground running and, and do a, fa a fabulous job. And, uh, you know, then some other people, maybe the experience would have been necessary. So kind of kind of wrap that up for us and say, hey, despite the lack of experience, here's why I plan to do well. And here's what, what's going to make me successful. So uh, first, um, yes, I haven't been on a lot of LPF committees or done that, but I have – Put together websites newsletters you know helped organize social media campaigns i've helped put on events i've helped do a lot of things that the committees do uh mm -hmm. even if it hasn't been with the state party and so uh, and then of course the people that are in these uh committees in these groups i like i said i talk to them regularly so i have a fairly good idea of what goes on in, in the committees and and how things are, are get done in a in a committee setting right so I, I wouldn't say that I have no experience, but you're right. Mm -hmm. I haven't served on a lot of these, um, a lot of these committees, but maybe that's a good thing because now I can come in there with fresh eyes and just say like, what's going on here? Nothing's getting done or this needs to be done this way or, or something like that and give give advice as ex officio, you know, uh, you're not, you're, you're a part of the committee. You're, you're mm -hmm. a, a voice. I would say you're a voice on the committee more than you're a member on the committee. Ultimately, the committee is going to do what it wants to do. The The chair of the committee uh, is really the one running the show there, and they're not necessarily accountable to, to me just because I'm the vice chair. <laughs> I'm just another voice in the room, uh, and mm -hmm. as ex officio, I, ha I basically have a right to be at the meeting, but I don't necessarily get a vote or, or anything like that. So it's more of an advisory capacity and just kind of like uh, a, another set of eyes and ears in the room to give opinions and – and share some thoughts. So uh, I, I think I can definitely do that. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I can go on and talk forever about different things I think the committee should do or how they might do things better. Um, so as far as like a lack of experience, like I said, I think like I have some experience doing the various things, um, but what I'm more interested in doing is getting them to work together rather than going off on their own adventures. I wanna see some coordinated effort and being ex officio on all of them, that's kind of how I see the best use of that time. It's just okay. saying like, like if we're in a meeting somewhere and like if we're in a meeting with candidates and they talk about there's a new candidate coming up, well, why don't you get with communications? Why don't you get with membership? Why don't you get with X, Y, Z and coordinate something together and make this as effective as it can be? That's kind of how I see myself on those committees. So not having been a member of all of them or, or many of them, I don't necessarily see that as a good or a bad thing. Uh, it could go either way. Okay. And so let's say you get elected. What does yeah. success look like? In other words, how should we judge you at the end of your term? Like, because you might say, hey, I want to run again. I think I did a really good job. So the delegates vote you in this year, you run uh, your term, and then you run again. And then the delegates are deciding whether or not you did a good job and you should be, um, you know, you should continue in that role. What does success look like for the delegates to, to judge you by? 
sure. Uh, I'll save the delegates the trouble. I do not intend to run again. <laughs> I okay. Wanna do, I want to do my two years uh, and and go on from there. Um, that's my intention at this time. I have no uh, future um, desires or whatever. So uh, my what how you can judge whether or not I've done a good deal is if you can answer to me what the state party has done in the last few months. Because um, right now, I feel like nobody can answer that question. They have no idea what goes on at the state party level. So the very first thing that I'm going to push for is, is a much greater degree of transparency, live streaming the meetings, actually inviting people to the meetings, letting people know what's happening in the committees, letting people know what the state party's objectives are. Do you know that the, the state party has a vision deck? Uh, you're pretty active in the party. I don't know if you know it or not. Uh, I, I know they have one. You're talking about from the chair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a yes. chair one. There's a vice chair one. There's uh, when you have Josh on, I'm sure he'll share his with you. Um, but like people don't know what the state party's up to or what their goals are, what they're aiming for, what they're trying to achieve. Like so, uh, if achieving that degree of trans transparency from the state party to the members uh, would be a huge win uh, right now. Uh, that would be one another good thing to judge on, um, and then. The other uh, big thing that I want to try to achieve while I'm there is to create a culture of accountability in the party. Um, mm -hmm. For a long time, we've had people who volunteer for positions. It seems like they just want to fill the role. They don't necessarily uh, have much interest in doing the job or they just are they they think they can do it. And then they get in and find out that they don't actually have the time to do it. But rather than uh, looking for a replacement or or letting people know that they can't do it. They just kind of sit there and meander. And so I want to be a voice on the committee that's going to say, you know, it, we need to cr cr change that culture of just f everything's failing, but that's okay. <laughs> like we need to get right. rid of that and it needs to have some more accountability there. So I want to be uh, kind of like, a, you know, if, if the chair is expected to be the good cop, then I kind of want to come in and be the bad cop. And so maybe that's why I don't have any desire to run after because I'm going to create so many enemies, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> OK, uh, I'm, I'm not sure that uh, saying that you're going to create enemies is a, I, I don't uh, a winning right strategy, say, but we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how that works out for you. I'm trying to figure <laughs> out how to how to make the, how to say this, because I, I know it comes off as rash or uh, something like that. But. I guess what I'm trying to say is like if you – I've heard it from other other people in these positions where they've said, well, I want to volunteer uh, – these are volunteer positions, and you can't expect a lot from volunteers. Well, if I'm coming in as the vice chair, there are certain expectations with that role. And so if I'm not performing those, I would expect somebody to call me out and say, hey, you know – you're allegedly the ex officio, but you haven't read any of, of the media. You have no idea what this committee's up to. Like, what are you doing in this role? Or, you know, you're supposed to be the vice chair, and, you know, the chair had to step out for some reason, and you weren't available to, to cover that meeting. You're, you have no idea what's going on with mm -hmm. the chair or what his objectives are or any of that. So if, if I was ever caught in that position, I'd be really embarrassed. And same for some of these committees. You know, if, if you're uh, – I know it's a volunteer position, and we don't pay, so – some people think that that's like an excuse to just not do anything, and I, I don't I don't view it that way. I think that there does need to be a, a greater degree of accountability with the committees. For example, if you have a candidates committee that is supposed to put on candidate trainings and support mm -hmm. its candidates, why do I hear from candidates that we don't have any support, that they don't have any training, that they're not getting much resources from the state party? To me, that would be an unacceptable uh, performance by – by uh, by that by that by that uh, committee chair, and there needs to be somebody there who's willing to say that and bring it up and then do something about it. So, yeah, like you said, saying like I'm going to create a bunch of enemies is probably the wrong way to say it. But I guess that's one of my weaknesses is that I just kind of let things slip and then I have to correct myself. <laughs> but I don't okay. want to be a voice for the party. I want to be somebody that makes things move in the party. Okay, so it sounds like rather than enemies, what you're really saying is. I intend, I, I being you, of course, I intend to really focus on accountability for all these different committees, uh, accountability, number one, in making sure that the committees are doing what they're expected to do. But then number two, saying, all right, accountability for myself, you, of course, oh, yeah, being saying I'm going to now go out and work to make cohesive committees so that when one committee is doing something that 
that may impact another committee or it may impact people that are depending on another committee um, that this information gets transferred and utilized in a way that makes the LPF uh, more valuable to all of the members. D did I kind of summarize that well? Yeah, you should be on my spin campaign. How do I? Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to spin things. I, what, I, no, what, I'm, I what I'm what I'm trying. Well, you know, I, I, we're here for tough questions, but at the same yeah. time, you know, I want to make sure that if I'm, even if you're maybe, you know, maybe if somebody says something a little bit inarticulately, that I, you know, if I understand what they're trying to go for, then say, okay, this is what you're trying to say, you know, because if we want to be honest about it, we want to have tough yeah. questions, we want to be honest and give the most, you know, charitable interpretation of what you're trying to say. Sometimes people when they're talking especially after they've worked all night long uh maybe a little bit tired and you know you, you just you you say it one way and then you look back and you're like ah oh, man i should have said it this other way um but we want to give people the benefit of the doubt because what we want is uh we want to have uh, you, you know we want to have all the proper information sure. that we you know and and if somebody just is a slip of the tongue that doesn't necessarily make them a bad candidate Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. No. And uh, I, I think you, I think you did hit it right on the head. Like what I'm trying to, what I'm trying to achieve with my language here. <laughs> I want to, I want us to be effective, and I, you know, wherever there's, um, wherever there's lacking, I want to be there to correct it in whatever way that means. If it means you need more resources, if it means we need somebody different, whatever it means, that's what I want to do. I want us to be an effective organization. I want the state party to be so effective that people are competing for these roles because it means something to be in this position and that we can actually and that we're actually out there achieving things and then I don't have to do it I don't have to run again right <laughs> right now I kind of feel like there's some some level of, of like duty that that like I need to go in there and I need to kind of clean house a little bit and and rearrange the the deck chairs before this ship goes down <laughs> Like okay. We, we really, we really got to start fixing things and taking it seriously because right now, you know, s stepping out of the state party stuff for not, just look around. Like banks are collapsing. We're headed towards another financial collapse. We're getting ready to have another uh, big shutdown moment, and we need mm -hmm. to be ready for it. We need to be able to respond to it, and not in the way that the LP responded to COVID. We failed on that. We failed miserably. We should have mm -hmm. we should have excelled. And there's another huge thing coming up here. If libertarians aren't good on economics, what are we good for? And here comes the biggest economic failure since 2008 is right around the corner. We all see it coming. We need to be ready and prepared to take it on seriously if we're going to be taken seriously and if we're ever going to become an effective organization. So my goal is to help us get to that level. OK, uh, one final question to put you in the hot seat since since I mentioned it. Oh, you haven't done that already. Okay. <laughs> so um, something you said caught my attention, and I thought it would sure. make for a good question. So sure. what has the LPF done in the last two or three months? One or two things. Not, you don't have to list a not, bunch. Not a whole lot, honestly. I mean, it's just a lot of, like, they've been waiting for updates on the, con on the convention. Uh, mm -hmm. I think we finally got our, our contract signed <laughs> for, okay. for some of our speakers. Um, that's great. Uh, th there's really not a whole lot to, to speak about. I mean, there's a new uh, – Hillsboro's finally going to be reaffiliated soon thanks to people like Eric Cordova. Got to give him props mm -hmm. where it's due. Hell, heck yeah, go on for it. So that's great. Good news to hear. Uh, oh, the, the, the state party in the last few months did give some money to its candidates. That was good to see. Um, mm -hmm. So – and that, those were uh, the candidates you were talking about before. I think they – you guys got a billboard. Um we did partly due to partly due to contributions from the LPF. So that was a positive. No, entire no, no, hold on. Entirely. Entirely. Okay, sure. Yeah. They they so, the LPF reached out and said, Hey, we want to get some uh get some advertisement for you guys. And it just so happened at the time that one of our candidates had already had done some research on some billboards. We selected a billboard and it turned out actually even better than we thought because we selected a digital billboard and what we were expecting was to be able to utilize one graphic and we were going to use one graphic Maybe for three bunch. people and they said you can pick up to four graphics that will run so for the same price so what we did was we created one graphic with all three and it said vote lpf in huge letters and then the other three were candidate specific and all of the More money came yeah. from the lpf 
Yeah, more like that is what we need to do because I think if you would if you review the LPF expenditures, you know, the biggest expense of the year is always convention and the mm-hmm. reason for that is always like, well, this is the biggest fundraiser of the year, so as long as it's profitable, it's excusable that we spend the majority of our money on convention. But really what we need to be spending money in my view is on things like that for our candidates, especially the local level candidates, county and under. Like they they really need to be supported in that way and that's huge so that's a, a big win for the lpf and i think you were trying to get me on a gotcha and i i remember <laughs> <laughs> i know no gotchas no. <laughs> this is friendly fire so i, I do have mean. to hold to the reputation which is i'm going to ask you tough questions okay so um I, I i think you've done fine what else have i not brought up that you want people to know uh so that you can secure their vote Well, you got to show up if you want to vote. So everybody should go to lpfcon.org and go check out the list of speakers and buy some packages. Sign up to be a delegate if you're eligible or even if you're not, just come and hang out. It's going to be a a heck of a time. So that's really the only thing we haven't mentioned is you got to go to the convention if you want to vote for me or against me. It doesn't matter. Just come out and have a good time and meet a bunch of libertarians. Every time I go to a convention – it's like I remember why I remember why we're here. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. uh, like some people like to rag on like the smaller affiliates and say like, oh, it's just a social club or whatever. But that's where it starts. And when you go to a convention, you get to see a lot of people that you haven't seen in a long time. Like I haven't seen you since I don't know last convention. I think right, right. <laughs> but, I think it's been know, last convention. It, it, but it's always a good feeling to see like to see old friends and to, and to get together and and do those kinds of things and and you start with a social club and it kind of does start at convention you really get to know people hanging out with them all weekend and and see what they're about and and then when it does come time to actually do something you're you're shoulder and shoulder brother in arms ready to ready to take on the world and so i would just say come to convention and see what it's about awesome i don't know know. well it's not really i'm I'm not a really good candidate (laughs) you know (laughs) So. Oh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure now I'm pretty sure that you're not supposed to say that. So, <laughs> yeah. but OK, well, I, I want to thank you for being on. I hope everybody uh, got something out of it. Um, hang backstage for just a moment while I close uh, this segment of the show out. Thank you, everybody, for listening. I uh, hope you enjoyed listening to Tim Crosby, who is running for vice chair for the Libertarian Party of Florida. Now, if you're watching and you're not from the Libertarian or you're not in Florida, this may be a little bit less relevant to you, but hopefully you still got something out of it anyway. Maybe you would like to run for an office in your state, uh, whether it be at the executive, uh, I'm sorry, not the executive, but the, the state level or the affiliate level. And hopefully these interviews will help give you some ideas on how you would want to communicate to the delegates that might be voting for you.